Hey everyone, it's Sharon Brandon and welcome to my studio. Today I wanted to share a few um, little experiments, tips and tricks that I have been doing with the new watercolor pencils. Uh, as you can see, here are all three sets of the pencils and I have swatched them out for you. So if you want a little closer look, um, this is everything in set one, another little card for everything in set two and then a third card for everything in set three. So there are three brand new sets of these woodless watercolor pencils. Each one is filled with pigment and they're great for a couple of things that I found so far. Um, one is just for coloring in stamped images. The other is for adding a few highlights to die cuts, which I'll show you and also um, just with a very sharp pencil, and that's something that I really like, you can sharpen these to get a really sharp point, um, is just to give some color to some stamped greeting. So I'll go ahead and show you a couple of those things today. Um, if you want more information on just the swatching, the colors, the different types of things that these pencils can work with, um, definitely go ahead and check out Tim's YouTube where he goes over all of that. Um, another thing that I did do is on the Ranger website, there is a color chart that you can download and print out for these pencils. And this has, you know, space for every single pencil. So I've gone ahead and swatched them and you can get a really good idea of all the colors that are available in the entire line. So that's something that is free. If you go to uh, rangerinc.com and click on the bottom of the page where it says organize your ranger products you'll see these charts there so um, with that i'll just go over a little bit um, about the containers so the containers do have a lid that just comes off on the back of the container it also has um, the colors for the pencils that are inside of each set uh, if you know me or you've taken a class with me or crafted with me before you know that that is not uh, something that I'm going to use because I don't tend to put anything away. So I have taken all of my sets out of our containers and just put them in a cup. And I mean, I don't really need to know what's what. I can kind of figure out each color um, it, because they are distressed colors and I've worked with them for so long. I can kind of figure out each color just by looking at the color. So I'm gonna keep my colors on my desk in a little cup and just show you a few of the things that um, I've gone ahead and played with so far. So one of the new die sets that I love is this feathery die set. And you may have seen a lot of makers ink up the feathery set, um, just like it's shown on the packaging. Um, I've done it with mica stains. I've seen some other makers stamp the feathery set I've done a couple of feathery uh, dyes today where I've just gone ahead and colored them in with watercolor pencils. And that just gives a great shading, a totally different look. And these are something that I'm gonna save to use in a mini book or an art journal. And I'll show you how I made one of those. So I'll get these out of the way and I'm just going to go ahead and move uh, my sheet into view here. And then I'm going to use um, a water brush as well. So if you have one of these, you'll want to take it out. And we'll just go ahead and start with the first feathery dye. So I've done a couple in different colors. So we'll pick a different color palette. Maybe this time we'll go for sort of like the a pinky purple palette. Oops. Um, let's see what about. Um, and then the first thing I've done with these, I think I'm gonna actually take the pink out and we'll use this one all in purple, is just take the lightest color. So in this case, a shaded lilac. Um, this one I'm not going to be too concerned about. This is just kind of like putting my base color and I usually start with the lightest one. And when, you know, it looks kind of smudgy now, but once we're done and we go over everything and blend the colors together with the water brush, uh, it's going to look really nice, so we'll just go ahead and color the whole the whole thing in here. Just make sure I get the edges. So there's some pigment on the edges when we do go ahead and brush over it. So that's the shaded lilac. 
And then we'll go ahead and move, go in with um, seedless preserve. So it's just something a little darker. And then how I've done these is just started at the bottom of the feather where it would be a little bit darker. And then just pick one of the sides that I'm going to make, you know, the darker side. So we'll go ahead and color that. Now for these, I'm not like super concerned about the sharpness of the point and I have used my pencils quite a bit so none of them are particularly sharp at the moment and then we'll take the villainous potion so that'll be our darkest color and I do want to go with a sharp pencil on this one so I'm going to just quickly sharpen it and this is where I'm going to start to want to add in some like some shading. So I have a pretty sharp point as you can see here and I'm just kind of giving giving the feather just like some flicks just so you have some let's see just so you have some shading and also like you would see on a regular feather just some different kinds of lines. So that will be my darkest color. And like I said, I'm going over the edges just to make sure I get plenty of pigment on there. Um, I'll just add a little more at the bottom. And like I said, um, if your pencil gets dull during this, you can always stop and resharpen it. And I also think I just want to add, just so it's not like totally flat in one color, just a little um, picked raspberry in here. And I'm not doing the same motions I'm doing actually for this just some little circles um, but it will just give it a little bit of a different color and I'll mix some of that in on the bottom so I'm just going to show you how that looks before I add some water to it and I did this a few different ways um, usually when I'm coloring something and water coloring I start blending from the out from the inside out so blending my darker color into the lighter but with these pencils for me I found that it works better when I start blending um, and you'll see it's blending here the lighter and I'll just go down the one side into the darker color and I'm not going to go over these lines too much I did just smooth them but um, I do want to keep a little bit of that line there and you'll see what happens is I'm just going to wipe some of that off because I don't want to put the dark back into the center. But everything is going to start to just blend together and look a little smoother. And I'll show you how that looks. What I'll do with this is just dry it for a second with the heat tool. And that's what it looks like when it's dry. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do just to give it some ink around the edges is I'm going to use just some distress ink and black soot and I'm just a foam blending tool so I'll just pick up a little ink and I'm just applying it lightly to the edges and I'm just turning the paper as I go around. And now I just have my feather it's ready to go into, like I said, um, onto a card, into a mini book, any art journal pages or mixed media project, but those are the feathers. And then I'll move on. There's a couple of other things um, with die cuts. The next technique that I wanted to share with you is coloring in some stamp sentiments with the pencils. So for this particular technique, I made sure the pencils are really sharp. So I picked out a number of rainbow colored pencils. Um, and then I'm just going to color each letter in a different color. So I'll kind of start in the middle. Um, so this seems about to be the middle where I'll start with the green. So I'm just going onto each letter and I'll just give it a little outline of color, like a really narrow outline. And this one, obviously I'm going to do in rainbow colors. Um, we'll go ahead and I'm 
and I'm just tracing a really thin line um, to the right of each of the letters. And now that we have all of the color put down, I'll just move the pencils out of the way. I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take my mat. I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take my mat. I'm just going to wipe off the brush. I'm going to start with the yellows and just ever so slightly go over each letter. Working into the blue. And it's just a fun way just to highlight the letters. So it'll look something like that. And we'll just do one more. Um, this one, I'll probably use these words. I'll probably cut them out when I'm done. And they're going to go into a journal project that I've been working on. So I'm just going to outline the letters a little bit here. And I'm going to just use the palette that I've been using in my journal. So I had some blue. I had a darker blue, and then I also had a brown here, so um, we'll go ahead and use frayed burlap. We'll do the same thing. So I'll just take my water brush and lightly go over it and you'll see the pigments start to react and everything will just look a little bit brighter. I'll do the same thing here. And I think I'm going to even cut each of these words out so it's just like a, you know, a sticker for each word. Uh, and it just adds a little something, you know, you can have a plain sentiment, but this will just add a little something, especially when it works with the colors of the project that I'm working on. So I hope you enjoyed some of these tips and tricks. Um, and the last thing I have for you today is just a panel of, this is the Distress Watercolor cardstock, and it's just colored with some Distress Oxide inks. Um, this is one of the scraps that I had in my bag, but just, uh, just showing you, you know, if you're going to use this on a card, you can use it for a background, um, that you can make some fun marks with pencils. So for this, I'm just going to add a few of my own marks here in contrasting colors. And just to create a fun background. And I'll also bring in the brown that we used before. And this way, um, it's a great way just to add your own marks into your work. And I'll do the same th thing here. I think for these blue scribbles, I'm going to leave them as is um, for these brown um, circles that I made. I'm just going to add some water and that just gives them a real fun like painted on look. So go ahead and go over each one just with a little bit of water. And then at some point I'll be turning all these projects into cards. So let's just recap what we what we did today with the pencils. So we basically used all of the colors of pencils. And the first thing that we created were some feathers. And then we also have the floral die cuts. 
I have a few sentiments that I've done that, um, you know, just have the coloring on them. And then finally, just a piece of mixed media paper with marks. Um, I hope you enjoyed some of these tips and tricks, and I hope you'll definitely try some of the techniques out for yourself. And I'd love to see them, so please be sure to tag me on Instagram if you share them. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back later in the week with another video using these pencils.